Hello, and welcome back to our Azure VMware Solution Technical Overview Series. Um, in this module, we're going to go over the uh, deployment of a private cloud object, dig into what actually gets deployed, and we'll talk about some of the uh, planning steps required to start the deployment. Azure VMware Solution delivers VMware-based private clouds in Azure. Uh, the private cloud hardware and software deployments are fully integrated and automated in Azure. You deploy and manage the private cloud through the Azure Portal, uh, Azure CLI, or PowerShell. This diagram shows the private cloud within its own Azure resource group and adjacent connectivity to uh, another VNet with native Azure services running within it in the same region. Here you can see that we have our vSphere clusters all configured with vSAN storage, managed by vCenter, uh, all using NSXT for network connectivity. NSXT traffic is routed to the AVS underlay and then to a dedicated Microsoft Enterprise Edge um, from which it can then be connected to uh, existing Azure VNets by way of an ExpressRoute gateway or connected to on-premises resources via configuring ExpressRoute global reach, connecting to a customer-provided ExpressRoute. In the video description, there's a link to an AVS private cloud component inventory document that will walk through the specific versions deployed today. So each private cloud includes clusters with uh, a number of dedicated bare metal server nodes provisioned with vSphere 6.7 Update 3, uh, Patch 5, Enterprise Plus, and that can be between three and 16 hosts per cluster. Three is the minimum, 16 is the per cluster max. You also get a vCenter Server 6.7 U3P appliance uh, for managing ESXi, vCenter Enterprise, and all your vSphere workloads. You get VMware NSXT 3.1.2 Advanced for vSphere workload VMs, and uh, VMware HCX 4.2.2 Advanced is deployed for workload mobility and cloud migration. This is not deployed out of the box anymore. Uh, this needs to be um, added after private cloud provisioning by way of the add-ons panel. Uh, Microsoft is currently running a promotion and providing HCX Enterprise at no additional cost. By default, Advanced gets deployed. You can upgrade to Enterprise by raising a support ticket. Um, that promotion is ongoing for the, the free Enterprise. They've said that it, they will um, support free Enterprise for at least a year. Um, a year after they make an announcement that the promotion is ending. So it's, it's wide open right now. We'd advise you to take advantage of it. There are a number of things that you need to identify or configure prior to deploying the private cloud object. Um, first, you'll need to identify the subscription that you want to deploy AVS into. And you can either create a new subscription or use an existing one. Uh, that subscription must be associated with an enterprise agreement or cloud solution provider plan. Um, once this is complete, you can create a support request with Azure support requesting host quota. So these AVS hosts are bare metal hosts and there are a finite number of them per region. You have to create a request to Azure support saying, I need this many hosts and they'll set them aside for you. Um, when you create that, that support request, you're gonna provide a region and the number of hosts that you need in that region. Next, you'll identify a resource group. Um, and generally we'll create a new resource group specifically for AVS and related resources, but you could also use an existing one. You also need to identify the administrator who will, who will uh, enable and deploy the private cloud. Uh, this individual's account should have the contributor role for the subscription. And then finally, you need to think about network requirements. Uh, you'll need a slash 22 network to deploy AVS. Uh, that address space is carved up into smaller subnets used for vCenter, NSXT, vMotion, and HCX. Uh, and that block should not overlap with any existing network segment you have on-premises or elsewhere in Azure. You'll also need an Azure VNet defined um, to connect to AVS into if you want to connect to other native services. Uh, generally, we'll create a, a VNet that hosts a jump box so that we can access the private cloud uh, from Azure. You'll, you also want to identify one or more network segments for your workload VMs. Those will get defined in NSXT post-deployment. And if you're going to use HCX uh, for migrations and network extension, there might be some on-prem segments you need to create. Uh, but this, this, again, can all be done after deployment. You also need to determine whether you're using VPN or Express Route to connect to uh, AV, the AVS private cloud and configure appropriately. Most of our enterprise customers will be using Express Route, but VPN is a fully supported configuration as well. You need to configure any firewall rules to access on premises resources from AVS or to access AVS from on prem. So, mapping out where AVS sort of lives within the uh, Azure Resource Manager hierarchy, Azure Portal hierarchy, um, this is an eye chart, but you can see the logical nesting of components. Um, as with all other Azure resources, private clouds are deployed and managed from within an Azure subscription. Uh, the number of private clouds per subscription is scalable. Uh, initially, there's a soft limit of one private cloud per subscription, but you can uh, expand that with a ticket. Within the subscription, the region where the private cloud will live is defined, and within that region, we create a resource group for the private cloud. And that is where our vSAN clusters and ESXi hosts will live. 
Uh, the private cloud, again, contains the vCenter server for management, all the SXI hosts, vSAN, NSXT, and optionally HCX. Uh, each additional private cloud that gets deployed will have a separate set of those management components. For each private cloud created, there's one vSAN cluster by default. Uh, you can add, delete, and scale clusters. Uh, the minimum number of hosts per cluster is three, and the initial deployment is, tends to be three. Each private cloud can support up to 12 clusters per cloud. Uh, there's a maximum of 16 hosts per cluster or 96 hosts per private cloud. If multiple clusters are deployed within the same private cloud, the management components will only live on that first cluster. All additional clusters will be fully available for workload VMs. And vSphere HA and DRS are enabled by default. Looking at the node type, uh, AVS clusters are based on hyperconverged bare metal infrastructure. Those hosts come from an isolated pool where they've passed all health checks and have all data securely deleted. Uh, these hosts are available for purchase uh, by hourly billing or by one year and three year reserved instances. There is only one host type available today. It's called AV36, and this contains uh, two 18 core uh, Intel Xeon Gold 6140 CPUs at 2.3 gigahertz with hyperthreading enabled. 576 gigs of RAM, uh, two 1.6 terabyte NVMe drives for vSAN cache, eight 1.92 terabyte SSDs for vSAN capacity, uh, two dual port 25 uh, gigabit ethernet NICs, with two of those NICs provisioned for ESXi system traffic and two provisioned for workload traffic. We show on the table, a typical three host starter cluster will get you 108 CPUs, 1.5 terabytes of RAM, and 46 terabytes of raw storage capacity. Uh, with a max cluster size of 16, you can get all the way to 576 CPUs, 8 terabytes of RAM, and 245 terabytes of raw storage capacity. And with 96 hosts per private cloud, uh, you can see just how scalable this can be, all the way up to 3,456 CPUs, 49 terabytes of RAM, and 1.4 petabytes of raw storage capacity. All right, to recap, we looked at what is inside the AVS private cloud, and we talked through some high-level deployment processes and prereqs. Uh, in the next module, we'll talk about AVS storage. Thank you.